Hi, my name is Dr. Dharmesh Kapoor. I am a liver specialist based out of Hyderabad. I work at Yashoda Hospitals, which is situated in Hyderabad. So I wanted to impart some basic facts on the liver transplant scenario. So as we all know, liver transplant is treatment or therapy that is offered to those patients who are extremely unwell, who have got a very sick liver. So the common scenarios in which transplant is the only option for a patient with liver disease is A. If the patient has got an abrupt and acute onset of liver dysfunction, what we call as acute liver failure. B. Someone who's got tumor in the liver and for other reasons this tumor cannot be removed or cannot be handled by other modalities of treatment. So this is called hepatocellular carcinoma or HCC being the indication for transplant and most commonly transplant which is done for patients suffering from chronic liver disease. So by far this third category takes up almost like 80 to 85 percent of the transplant activity. And the first category which is acute liver failure even though these patients are the sickest liver patients but that constitutes roughly less than 5 percent of the transplant activity. Many a times patients with chronic liver disease also have an underlying tumor and therefore when we remove this liver and replace it by a new one then you are effectively hitting two birds with one stone. So you are removing the diseased liver also and you are taking care of the tumor also and this is a curative treatment that you are offering to the patient. Now the types of liver transplant that are available to us are broadly two. A is a living donor liver transplant in which a live donor, someone who is related to the affected patient, comes forward, gets a thorough evaluation done and then this patient is subjected to very stringent imaging techniques. We do a lot of tests to assess the physiology of the patient, the well-being and fitness of the patient to undergo a surgery of liver removal. A part of the liver gets removed for this patient which is called liver resection. So this particular type of transplant is called living donor liver transplant. Traditionally, this kind of transplant is practiced commonly in the Eastern Hemisphere. So that is countries in the Far East like Japan, Korea and then Southeast Asia and India in particular. So in our country, if 100 transplants get done, then roughly about 80 to 85 percent of these would be the living donor way. Now what are the potential issues with the living donor transplant, let's first talk about the good things. The good things is that there is no waiting period. So someone who's very sick and needs an emergent transplant and does not have time to wait because we all know that the other category of transplant there will always be some waiting period and I will come to that in a minute. So here once the recipient evaluation has been done, the donor evaluation is found to be suitable, we can proceed with the surgery. So this is more or less a kind of an elective operative procedure. So a part of the liver gets removed from the donor. We know that this is the only solid organ in the human body which has a potential to regenerate and we take advantage of this particular capacity of the liver to perform this surgery. In the donor, the liver regenerates over varying periods of time and if the donor pursues a healthy lifestyle, probably such a person would never need any aftercare following this surgery. However, if we try to look at the downside of this, this is one of the most major surgeries that is known to medical science. It is very easy for us as physicians to suggest this procedure, but very difficult for most families who are already battling the ill health of a given member of the family and then come to realize that another member of the family also needs to come under the knife. So at times the families find it a little difficult to reconcile with this fact. Also traditionally patients who are not very sick and the liver disease severity scores come to the fore in this particular aspect, they are the ones who are subjected to living donor transplant. So I am not for a minute saying that you cannot transplant sick patients the living donor way but by and large patients who are stable but who have earned a liver transplant surgery are the candidates for the living donor procedure. Now in recent times we have been seeing that patients who come to us with liver disease they are extremely unwell. They are unwell from their liver disease severity 
as well as they are unwell by way of their physiology and phenotype now what do i mean the, by that so we all know that in 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 the human population there is a kind of a caloric explosion so we are battling with much larger wastes much heavier patients and also patients who are now having advanced age so earlier the longevity of the human beings all over the all across the globe as well as in india used to be much lower than what we are seeing now which is a good thing which actually bears testimony to the fact that there is improved quality of life improved quality of care as well as improvement in medical sciences which is allowing pe- people to live much longer but the flip side is that these patients will have more challenging surgery so for example the liver disease severity score which is defined by the meld score so the meld is the model for end stage liver disease score now if the score is very high these are the patients who have got a very high chance of succumbing to the liver disease over a short period of time secondly supposing there is a patient who is having obesity that means this patient's body mass index is very high and it's not unusual for us nowadays to see patients with end stage liver disease who weigh more than 100 kg and at times even more than 120 to 130 kg then thirdly as the onslaught of obesity epidemic is affecting mankind the number of other organs which get affected due to obesity what we call as comorbidities in our terminology they also go on increasing so what generally happens or typically happens to someone who's overweight or obese they will have difficulty in ambulation they won't be able to move freely at times they will have other issues for example poor sleep which is due to obstructive sleep apnea they might be having issues with their cardiac functioning so effectively what i am trying to say is that their functional status might not be as good as a person of the same age and same sex who weighs or who has got a normal body mass index so these are the challenges that the transplant community is currently battling with now what do you do in a patient like this so offering a living donor transplant for patients who say weigh 120 kg is a very daunting task because we must remember that from a live donor there is only a limited volume of liver that you can remove so we always prefer to do the deceased donor liver transplants in this cohort of patients by deceased donor liver transplant this is the second por- prototype of liver transplant wherein someone who has sustained irreversible brain injury and is not likely to get better in spite of continued medical treatment we approach the families we do certain tests which are called the tests of brain stem life or brain stem death and if these tests are found to suggest that this patient is not alive the brain sort of a way then we talk to the family members so that they would we feel encouraged to come forward and donate the organs of this particular patient so please remember one deceased donor can almost save eight lives so you can you can utilize the heart you can utilize two lungs we can do a single lung transplant double lung transplant two kidneys a liver and in certain select situations we can split this liver the pancreas and the small bowel so you can see that one particular brain dead donor or a deceased donor can save so many lives now coming back to the subject of liver transplant when you have a donor or when you have a recipient who's not fit like i told you that someone who's obese or morbidly obese has multiple comorbidities we always fi- find it more suitable and more appropriate to transplant them the deceased donor sort of a way and this actually gives you a much greater advantage so the deceased donor liver transplant is a much shorter surgery is a much quicker surgery the amount of time or the anesthetic exposure is much lower and these patients many a times you might be able to even remove them off the ventilator in the operating room itself so their after care and recovery also becomes much faster and much smoother so the center where we work we have a unique advantage that you can cater to both these two kind of patients so so patients who are very sick very unwell and who have got an imminent risk of death we always prefer to do the living donor transplant but of course the case selection has to be very judicious and those and often times these are patients referred from the other parts of the country where the deceased donor transplants are very infrequent or are a rare event 
so these patients we would always prefer to transplant them the deceased donor kind of a way so this gives you a very good balance of actually getting the satisfaction of transplanting sick people obese people people who have got a poor functional status people who have got a lot of comorbidities and yet at the same time deliver the same kind of results that you will get in while transplanting a very fit recipient from a healthy live donor so i think for the transplant program to grow in our country my my, my own feeling is that most transplant centers should be pursuing these two modalities almost on an equal footing because it makes life much easier for the transplant team and also is going to provide a huge comfort factor for the families who are you who are also caring for patients like this so my experience over the last two two decades has been that it's never easy for a given family to a have a very sick patient who needs the transplant to save the life and b have someone else come forward to donate a part of the liver it becomes extremely stressful and as physicians if we were to put ourselves in the patient shoes we would probably think similarly so i think the 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 scenario of the disability occurring due to liver disease is increasing we all know that the the nafld nash that is the non alcoholic fatty liver disease non alcoholic steato hepatitis pandemic is something that we have to contend with for many decades to come and therefore it might be our our best possible scenario to be able to offer both these two type of transplants for our patients thank you